Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Electric Viking. Fantastic to see you here now. Nissan has responded to the competition and it's heating up. No doubt about it, it's heating up with the lowest priced EV in the United States. They've slashed the price of the Nissan Leaf to 27500 for the base model. So, of course, after EV incentives in the United States, you can get a Nissan Leaf for $20,000. US Of course, very expensive when you compare it to, say, the price of the lowest priced EV in China but then very different in terms of the product you're getting. So I think it's actually really good value. However, of course, you need to be living in an area where you can deal with not having thermal management, which would affect your battery degradation. Many areas, that won't matter, won't make any difference whatsoever. But in really hot areas, I would advise against getting an EV without proper battery thermal management. Now, the thing that really intrigues me about this is that right now, Tesla makes the first and third most American cars in America. In other words, the Tesla Model 3 and the Model Y are considered the first and third most American-made vehicles because the majority of their parts come from American-made companies. Whereas companies like GM and Ford make many of their vehicles, in fact, more than half of them in Mexico or in other countries, and then they import them back into the United States. Anyway, getting on to the point. Right now, if you purchase this Japanese-made Nissan Leaf in the United States, you can make get 7500 dollars back from the United States government as an incentive. Now, EV incentives are great and I support those, but it's ironic that the United States government is supporting a Japanese manufacturer and essentially punishing American manufacturers because it's not only Tesla that doesn't get the EV incentives. Now it doesn't qualify anymore because they've sold too many EVs. It's also General Motors. So Tesla and General Motors are being punished by the American government and Japanese car maker Nissan is being, well, financially supported by the American government. Now I know there's measures in place that are intended to put an end to this at some point, but it's been a long time now that Biden's been in power and we know that Trump, while he's been criticized for good reason and and he did nothing to prevent this situation. But Biden, he's taking his sweet time on this too, isn't he? Anyway, just a little thing there I thought I'd point out before getting on to the details of the Leaf. Now, Nissan has slashed the prices on the 2022 Nissan Leaf. This is not the old model. This is the new model. And they're being very aggressive on pricing. The automaker has decreased prices by 4200 compared to its 2021 models, making it the most affordable EV in the US, at least for the moment. Now, while the Leaf remains Nissan's lone EV offering for sale in the United States, it is one of the longest running EV models, having debuted back in 2010. The Nissan Leaf was actually the reigning best selling plug in EV for years until the Tesla Model 3 showed up and recently took its crown, usurping its total sales numbers last year in 2020. Now, it's sort of interesting, isn't it, that Nissan has still only released the Leaf since it was so early to get an EV to the public. Some people say that the automaker's EV plans were derailed when former CEO Carlos Ghosn was an ouster jailed and subsequently escaped to Lebanon. But personally, I believe the reason Nissan hasn't invested heavily in the Leaf is because its sales have been fairly tepid as of the last few years. And one of the reasons for that is that many of the original owners were burned by the fact that their resale values fell off a cliff because people realized that Nissan batteries had a big problem with significant and severe battery degradation, with many of them seeing as much as 50% battery degradation within only a few years. And this was because the batteries didn't have a proper thermal management system. In fact, they had no thermal management system whatsoever. And of course, this led to significant issues. Apparently, the newer models still don't have a thermal management system, but they are better thermally managed, no thermal management system, but the batteries are better able to handle the heat. That's very possible and extreme cold and extreme heat. However, of course, like I mentioned before, if you live in a hot area, probably not a good idea to buy this vehicle. Now, this said, Nissan does have an EV on the horizon. It's Aria, which is sort of a mid-sized SUV and I think looks very impressive. Now, recently, Nissan has shared plans for an electric crossover to be built at a new facility in the United Kingdom at their kind of gigafactory where they're going to be building cars and batteries. Now, while Nissan appears to have more EV offerings on the horizon, its current focus remains on the 2022 model year of its LEAF and in cutting prices to increase sales. Now, according to Nissan's US website, the new 2022 LEAFs have arrived with prices below $30,000. The most basic version of the LEAF is listed at $27,400 before taxes, title license handling, or destination fees. 
But that said, the, the 2022 Nissan Leaf sits well below $30,000 US dollars and $1,500 less than Mini Electric's starting MSRP, which was the previous cheapest EV in the United States. And we'll see if Mini decreases the price to regain their cheapest EV crown in the United States. And this is a pretty big price cut, isn't it, compared to the 2021 Nissan Leaf? which was selling for over $31,000 at their lowest. But remember though, there are many reports of people walking into dealerships in the United States and being able to get these discounted very heavily. So whether or not the prices have really changed at the final cost to the buyer is dependent upon which dealer you go to and what kind of deal you could get. Now, there are several different variations of the 2022 Leaf available in the United States. They're also available in other countries, including the United Kingdom, Europe and Australia, but not all start below 30,000 US dollars. So there's actually five different models. The cheapest version, which costs 27,400 and has been reduced in price by 4,200, is the Nissan Leaf S with a 40 kilowatt hour battery. The Nissan Leaf SV is the second cheapest version, which also has a 40 kilowatt hour battery. It costs 28,800 US dollars and has decreased in price by 6,000 US dollars. The third middle of the range model comes with a 62 kilowatt hour battery and costs 32,400 US dollars, which is a price saving of 5,870 dollars. Now, this is the model I personally would be looking at if I was in this market. Not to say that I would buy a Nissan Leaf, but if I was looking at buying one, I would be going for the 62 kilowatt hour version at 32,400 US dollars. Now, up from that, is the Nissan Leaf SV Plus, which has also a 62 kilowatt hour battery, but obviously high specifications, comes at 35,400 US dollars and has a 5,000 US dollar discount. And then up from that is the Nissan Leaf SL Plus with a 62 kilowatt hour battery as well and a price of 37,400, which represents a discount of 6,570 US dollars. Personally, if I were looking at a car around that price range, I'd be looking maybe more at a Model 3. That's my personal taste. So as you can see, all prices have been cut by at least 4,200 and up to 6,500 US dollars. So with the US federal tax credit, you can get a 2022 LEAF below 20,000 US dollars. Now, according to the federal tax credit page from fueleconomy.gov, Nissan still qualifies for the full 7,500 tax rebate for EVs. That means if you were to purchase the 2022 Nissan Leaf S and qualify for the full credit, you would get it for an MSRP of 19900 Now, there will be additional charges for tax, licensing, destination fees, etc. But that's still a really, good fee, a really good price for a brand new EV, and you might be able to negotiate actually getting some of those fees cut. Now, if you don't qualify for the tax incentives, you can still lease the vehicle, and then you will qualify by doing it that way and buying it at the end of the lease. But whether or not you want to do a lease is another story. Now, additionally, consider that state and local utility EV incentives could save you thousands more. It's important to note, though, that several factors determine every consumer's individual tax credit amount when purchasing an EV. So it's important to do your homework, consult with your tax professional to ensure you get the most out of your car purchase. Now, many people have said the Le Nissan Leaf is a really good car. However, Nissan's continued use of CHAIDMO or C-H-A-D-E-M-O for fast charging and lack of active thermal management has to give you pause when buying one of these. Unfortunately, Nissan has squandered their head start in the EV race, and this does matter. They introduced the Leaf even before Tesla introduced the Model S, and in 10 years, Nissan has done, well, close to nothing. EVs for Nissan currently account for less than 2% of Nissan's US sales. The Mach-E and the ID4, the Ford Mach-E and the Volkswagen ID4, have already surpassed the Leaf in quarterly US sales. Now, back in 2008, then CEO Carlos Gozen announced Nissan planned an entire lineup of EVs and he might really have intended it, but it's clear his successes do not. Thanks for watching the video. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.